How similar can two books be while still being completely different and amazing? Hello, I'm Claire. I like some books, but I learn from all of them. Hannah Gadsby and Trevor Noah are my absolute favorite comedians, period. So when I saw that they both have written memoirs, like nothing could hold me back from reading those ASAP, except for time itself, because it took me a few months to read them, but we're all good now, all is well. So yes, today I want to talk about Hannah Gatsby's 10 steps to Nanette and Trevor Noah's Born a Crime. Both of these books are amazing and I would recommend them to almost anyone. Although I do need to preface that both of them need content warnings about a lot of stuff. So do check those out if you need to. That's as far as I can go without giving you any kind of spoilers. So consider that to be your warning. Can you even spoil a memoir? I don't know. I am going to be talking vaguely about stuff that happens in the books. So if you want to skip that, just go and read the books and then come back here. It's fine. I'll be here. The point of why I want to talk about these two books at the same time is because they are very similar. They are both written by a comedian. The audiobook is narrated by that sad comedian. And I think both of them have done a wonderful job, both with the writing part and with the audio narration part. So I enjoyed all of those things very much. But these are all very surface level things that you have probably already guessed just from the titles. And I want to dig a little deeper. It's amazing to me how these two comedians who are very different, very, <laughs> very different, how the cores of their stories are still very similar. So Trevor Noah is mixed race, male, grew up in South Africa. Hannah Gadsby is white, gay, and grew up in Tasmania, the island south of Australia. Presented like that, these two books should have no overlapping feature whatsoever. But it is not the case. They have both had a very difficult childhood for different reasons, but still extremely difficult. When I say childhood, I also mean like all of the teenage years and well, also like the 20s. To me at this point, 25 year olds are kids. So childhood it is. They have suffered abuse from people who were near to them. Trevor was physically abused by his stepdad and Hannah was abused by an unnamed person in ways which I do not care to repeat here. They both didn't fit in Trevor because he was a mixed race child in South Africa during the apartheid where black and white people were not allowed to procreate. Hence his whole title of the book, Born a Crime. He was literally proof of the crime that his parents have done. And the point is he didn't fit in with the white kids. He didn't fit in with the black kids. He didn't fit in with the colored kids. He didn't fit anywhere. Although I do think he did a decent job of having a clique of his own in the end, but there is a theme of not fitting in. Hannah, on the other hand, is autistic and gay and was growing up in a part of Australia that was not known for its tolerance of anyone who is different. So she definitely did not fit in in any way, shape or form. And I think she describes this feeling of everybody else has gotten a handbook on how to do a life except for you and you're just here trying to make the best of it and somehow failing all the time at everything. 
could not relate to that at all at no point no another through line that i really enjoyed in both of the books is trevor's and hannah's relationship to their mother both of those mothers are very very strong and vivid characters in the books and again both trevor and hannah butt heads with them all the time and yet you can still also feel the love that is there and i just love that you could feel in both of those cases the relationship is loving but also complicated <laughs> i think such relationships are fascinating and i don't think they are explored enough in the media just in general especially not in disney movies where the parents are dead and of course the overall tone of both of these books is there are some very shitty circumstances but through a lens of a comedian and this is the way that i found that i can digest difficult topics slight tangent like 15 years ago i had to stop reading the news because i would literally cry every time i would read almost anything because well what are the news gonna report but on really sad stuff so i had to make a decision and stop following the news altogether the most important things would still come to me one way or the other but i wouldn't seek the news out but in the recent years i have found that if a comedian is presenting me the news not in the sense of making light of something sad or horrible that is happening but expressing how sad and horrible that actually was and then cracking a joke about something tangential in that way i could digest the sad bad horrible whatever news without being paralyzed after that i would still feel some kind of an aftershock but i would still be able to do the laundry that is also the way how i found trevor noah existed and i'm very much glad i did my point is that even though or even because both of these books are tackling some very hard issues like racism and abuse in families or gay violence and abuse of neurodiverse children the books do it in a way where i can empathize with the narrators without going into the everything is terrible i just want to die mode i realize now that i've spent most of my time talking about trevor noah's book even though hannah's was the one that resonated with me more possibly because i'm a neurodivergent woman as well i also want to mention that in hannah's book she also mentions things like getting diagnosed later in life not as a child having developed a depression because of the lack of diagnosis and then the treatment that would alleviate at least part of what has caused the depression in the first place and yeah the only negative thing or well negative thing that i can find in either of these two books is that some of the stories i think were not finished and i think trevor's book is more of a culprit here because he does give several anecdotes from his life that involve other people and we never hear what happened to those other people possibly he doesn't know either but this was a tiny nitpick that i would have loved to have had just like a sentence or two of where those people ended up if after all of this any of these two books sound interesting to you i highly recommend you check them out and if you know of any other delicious delicious comedian memoirs do let me know i would be very much interested in gobbling more of them up nom 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 nom, nom. until the next time you click on one fan videos uh, bye bye
om nom 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 is the actual sound I make while eating books.